Hey everybody, this is going to be a video about the Enlightenment and the United States American Revolution, which was fueled by Enlightenment ideas. So there were philosophers such as Voltaire and Montesquieu, who in Europe were talking about the rights of people, and there were lots of changes, people were against their absolute monarchs. Now, that was being heard by England subjects all the way in North America. Now, however, in North America, a growing number of England's colonists in North America accused England of tyrannical rule, and they were upset with the king not giving them rights. And this is going to be, in, they're going to be emboldened by Enlightenment ideas. The people are going to think they need to attempt to overthrow the king because he's not helping them out. He's instead just increasing taxes and giving them no say in government. Thomas Jefferson, he's going to be the author of the Declaration of Independence, and he's going to basically tell the king, listen, the American colonies need to have a say in their own government, that people are created and have certain liberties, such as free speech. However, Thomas Jefferson, at the same time, he also owned slaves, so he was a hypocrite. The old idea in colonial America, and yes, America was a colony of Britain. The old idea is that the colonists, they considered themselves subject to the British king, and the king's laws affected them, and they shouldn't question the king's laws. After the Enlightenment ideas were circulated in the New World, there's this new idea. There's a, a lot of abuses by the king, and the colonists want their right to declare independence. And the colonies were making England lots of money. They were very prosperous. There were 13 colonies, and the people in the colonies didn't really see themselves as British anymore. Colonists saw themselves as less British, but more as, let's say, a Virginian or a Pennsylvanian. However, they were still technically British subjects, and they were expected to obey British laws. Now, after a series of costly wars in 1651, the British Parliament passed a trade law called the Navigation Act. This and other trade laws prevented colonists from selling their most valued products to any country except Britain. In addition, the colonists had to pay high taxes on imported French and Dutch goods. Britain's policies benefited the colonists and the motherland. However, the colonists basically wanted less taxes, and they saw this as an infringement on their rights. Now, North America in 1783, if you look at the map, you'll see the green area, the United States, Boston, New York, Charleston, and the British still own Canada. The Spanish have a huge area, and the French also have a large area. So the United States wasn't necessarily going from sea to shining sea at this time. Enlightenment ideas did appear in the U.S. Constitution once the United States won their War of Independence. John Locke. His ideas are seen in the Constitution. The Constitution begins with the preamble, we the people of the United States, all right? And it creates a representative government and it limits the power of government. These were John Locke's ideas. Um, Enlightenment thinker, Montesquieu, the separation of powers in our Constitution. Our government separated into three branches. The three branch branches, powers are divided. Um, Rousseau, direct democracy, public election of president and Congress. That's going to be seen in the original Constitution. Voltaire, freedom of speech and religious toleration. Now, voting is going to be the big right that the Americans are going to get. And at first, in 1789, the only people, and this was hypocritical, allowed to vote were white males, and they had to own property. 